Yo, yo, what's up? Well, she. And not too much. Uh, how, how about those games? I'll tell you what. Uh, whoever, whoever out there, similar TV that uh, you know, gets paid to choose which games are uh, on TV, he uh, he might get a bonus after tonight. Man, yeah, the right things went down. They they both started off pretty ugly, but they ended up pretty good. It was really, I, I'm not gonna lie. Well, you know, we always stay neutral. At least I do. I don't know what you do, man. I say, but I had I had to pull for. I was pulling for the, for the comebacks on both of them. But I think I think the, the teams that put in the put in the work really deserve the win. They pulled them out, but the games were crazy. They were great. I mean, there's nothing not neutral about rooting for an upset. Not an upset, but a comeback. I mean, that's just good ball. You just love a comeback. You know what I mean? I feel like it'd be less neutral not to root for a comeback. That'd be weird. Yeah. So I'm, I'm with you on that. I was, I was more impressed. It was a smaller comeback, but I was more impressed by Georgia's comeback. Just, I mean, that, that Gonzaga team, and people are going to hate it because I know everyone overreacts after one loss, and that's, that's what we do. But yeah. uh, this, this Gonzaga team is still very well in the argument for the best team in the country, if you ask me. No, nobody's going to go perfect. Everyone's going to lose at some point. I mean, who, who's left at this point? They even have the chance. Kentucky, they I mean, they'll lose at some point. I'm sure they will. And then you know this gonna like you said, it's gonna be the overreactions. You see you see them in social media and everything when a team's up by six points. They're killing them, so yeah. <laughs> You're right. But I, I for me the Georgia one I, I take the other stance. The, the the Gonzaga one was more impressive to me. Oh, I take that back. I take that back. They were both they were both unique okay. in their own ways. Yeah, the the, the Georgia comeback they really played some great defense, and they started hitting some great shots. But I was very let down. Oh my God, I was so let down by coach's decision to uh, to foul that early in the clock, but to waste that much time to decide to do. I don't know if the players didn't execute, or it was miscommunication like that. That's how they lost that game. You ask me that foul, like they. You take a chance, and you see if your defense can hold and if, if you're going to burn that clock. So uh, that was wild to me. And then on the Gonzaga one, just uh, Oklahoma, I would say, honestly, it was great to watch the excitement was, but Oklahoma let them back, let Gonzaga back in the game more than Gonzaga so, fought back into the game. I think at some point Gonzaga was bound to get hot because they're great offensively. And, they, you know, Kate Bishop is a, he's a ship sailing, right? But uh, some of the shot selection at the end of Oklahoma is exactly why you see them at the record that they are and probably going to have one, you know, a, a struggle of a season ahead of them. If you actually a shot selection at the end of the game, they were lucky to hold on. Look, I mean, look, look, I, this is what I've been saying. And, and they're four and five, and I'm telling you right now, the fans are going to be calling. People are going to be calling for Oklahoma to be ranked. I don't know if it's warranted. Yeah, they can be <laughs> but they can be the number two team. Yeah, you're not lying. But I mean, like, they're, they're four and five. You don't get ranked off of one win. That's not, that's not how the rankings work. I think people are, first, first of all, people need to understand the rankings don't matter. It's just some group that calls themselves the SP that, like, ranks them, and everyone just accepts it as, like, official, right. which it is. It's a good ranking, but, I mean, that's, that's, that's what it is, but, I don't know if this will get them in the rankings. What I will say, though, is I've been saying this, and they did pull out this win, and Jason McGuez was electric tonight. But what did I say about four or five Oklahoma games ago when they got their first win? This, this Oklahoma team is going to be at their best when Floyd Henderson is the best scorer on the floor for them. Yeah. That, that's what I'm going to say right now, because you're going to get Jason McGuez 20 points to 30 points probably every game. You know, lowest like 16, 18, something like that. If Floyd Henderson's doing his, doing his thing when he when he's putting up thirty to forty points, which he's absolutely capable of night in and night out, that's when this team is at their best. Jason Gett and Cino Chapa should be the number twos to me, anyways. I think that's what we're going to see throughout the season when Floyd Henderson has those big games and Jason Gett and Cino Chapa can do their thing as a supporting guy because they're both very good. But I think Floyd's the one who's got the potential to be like a superstar going forward. That, that's, that's just what I think. We'll see if that's a, a good take, bad take. You never know. 17, 8, and 5 is what he had tonight. One turnover. Are you good? Um, some, pretty, some pretty clutch buckets, yeah, like right. when he decided to show up. Suno Chapa, uh, I mean, he looked good today. I think he, was, you know, he had the ball handling duties tonight, and that looked good. Um, and I don't think he turned the ball over one time. I just, the team, you know, I don't want to hop on because there were some other good games, bro. We got to talk about it. Uh, like, before you tap out for the night, you know, I got my glass of wine here. You know what I'm going to do in a minute. So, <laughs> but, but the Oklahoma, they just, they're too perimeter oriented for me, man. I just, 
but, but the, uh, is it Horner? Abe Horner? I'm not sure how you say it. Horner and, Horner? and Hogg. Like, they're, they're the two big kids they had in the middle, they oh, look Hogg. really good defensively tonight. Like, that's what held. That's what Gonzaga was struggling early on because the defense was, was decent in the middle. It's not normally that way. So, I mean, yeah, well, just, uh, the, the primitive shots are too, they're too much for me, man. Look, they're going to be one of those teams that lives and dies by the perimeter. We see it every year in college basketball. If they get hot, say they make it to Hoops, Hoops Area with a good seed, a decent seed, or any seed, if they get hot in Hoops Area, they're a hard team to beat when they're scoring from the perimeter. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, great win for Oklahoma, though. You can't, you can't complain too much. But the Georgia game, though, I do have to ask this question because everyone, everyone – who was I talking to earlier? I'm not sure. I was talking to one of my guys. And, of course, everybody – uh, I would say everybody 25 and under loves Royce Anderson, the pretty step back and the highlight moves. Um, but I, three for 10, something like that tonight. Um, Five for 15. Yeah, not. I'm, I'm, there's no hate in it. It's just the inefficiency, man. Like that's something that comes over time. But I don't. I don't know if his game. Gives you efficiency, you know what I'm saying? And then King Cross, he's got a he's got a brother that goes hard, and I'm sure they train and work out together, even though they're at different schools. Uh, Darian looks good tonight. Like whose team is that? That's what I wanted to ask you. Whose whose team is it? And, you know, I think it's gonna vary game to game, but I think it's gonna be Darian. He's got the seniority. I think look, as good as Grace is very talented, like supremely talented. I'm gonna give you a comp for him that people are going to think is a joke uh, in a second. But Dar- Darian's been there. I mean, this this is Darian's team. I think Royce needs another year or two before he's really going to be what we're going to know to be the Royce Anderson that his legacy is going to be built on. Stop. He, hey, man, talented. stop all the precursor. You say you're talking about before people. Who's going here? This is me and you talking. What's the comp? Come on, man. Well, Come on with it. The, the, I'm telling you, he reminds me, his floor and his ceiling, both of them are J.R. Smith. <laughs> and I, I don't say that as a side, bro. I'm not saying that as a side. Jr. was a. You're, you're talking early. You're talking. Yeah, you're talking Nick Jr. Yeah, and his his floor is like old Jr. Okay, so he, he's he's Nick's Nuggets Jr. And, yep, and his floor is Cavs Cavs Jr. Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. That's what I see. And he's got kind of that same. What's the word I'm looking for? He's got kind of the same like. Uh, just energy to him. You know, he's kind of quiet, but when he does talk, he's, he's very confident. But it's kind of like his style of play, too. It's all just, it just, he gives me J.R. Smith. He just gives me J.R. Smith. And I'm really. So, do we have to talk about Alabama today? I know how you love him. Do we, do we have to? He's well, required. We, we can, I mean, look, 100 points. <laughs> that looks great. I got another game I really would rather uh, talk about. But I'll tell you what, I mean, look. I'm not going to they, – they're a top three team in the country. I don't care if they got lost, whatever. I mean, they're a top tier, three team. I think they're right up there with, with Duke. And, yes, they took that loss to Duke, but that game was closer than people realized once the broadcast went out. Um, they, they a lot of people, you know, could have won that game had that, that shot not got turned over. But, yeah, we don't have to talk too much about all of it. <laughs> they, they steamrolled. They steamrolled Dayton. It was a good team. But, I, look, I, I'm about to put another team, though, in the category I put Miami in last night. Loser. I'm about to tell you that they suck. I know who they are. I know what you're going to say. Kansas City, <laughs> they suck. Not, look, I'm, 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 and again, I'm, 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 I'm not trying to be mean. I love Charles Pinkert. Charles Pinkert is invited to Thanksgiving at my house. Charles, but he can't. But, but he cannot. He can't be the lead. He can't. He can't. He can't. He can't. He can't. A freshman three-point sniper, no. a three-and-D specialist, cannot be your leading scorer. That's what I'm saying. His game going to come along. Like, we've seen him. He hit a little growth spurt there. I like his game. I like that, I like that he can show. I've seen him. He's seen that he's worked on his ball handling and all that, but he's not, is he ready? No. Like, Madison Miles was supposed to be that guy. And he won that guy last season. Nas Hall, six points? Six points. Oh, only eight shots, too. Wasn't even shooting that much. Jabbar Wilson, the big donut. I'm not. I'm Jarvis not. I'm not Wilson. Wilson. I'm, I never had. But, but nothing from it. Yeah, don't, like, Jabbar, Wilson, just, Jabbar Wilson was out there doing cardio tonight. Thirty minutes, zero points, zero rebounds, one assist, one steal, zero block, one turnover. Let me let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. <laughs> okay, so Kansas, I think they're ranked like 18, 18, yep. 19, something like that right now, right? 
And people were high on Rutgers, but obviously they weren't ranked. We, we've already talked about the rank as just a group of, you know, a group of smart, quote unquote, smart people doing doing their thing, right? But if if we were to talk, you know, early in the season, at any point in the season, I would call you and you had no idea, and you wouldn't stand up on some of you. And I said, hey man, do you know that Rutgers beat one of the top teams, and Dylan Harper only had 13 points, and Curry Show only had 12 points. And Jermaine Owens did not have 500 blocks. Would you believe me? Okay. First of all, Cuddy Joe having 12 points, that's pretty good for it. 12 points in 20 minutes. He's, I mean, he's a defender. He's a defender in my eyes. He can, he can do some scoring, but he's a defender. The Dylan Harper thing, kind of surprising, but knowing that I know how good defensively this team is, and if you watch this game, you saw it held Kansas to 13 points in the first half. Look, I did a whole thing about what, what I think's up with Kansas. They, they lack a, a true strong interior presence. Jarvis Woodson, 11 boards, and I agree. They lack a true interior presence on offense. Some build self, I'm talking about moving Madison Miles back to the, back to the post. He, he, he's great on the wing, but I think he's truly best in the post. But that might hurt his development because he might be an SWBA wing guy. But to answer your question, I got, sorry, I got a little sidetracked there. Uh, I, I don't think I would have believed it. This Kansas team was supposed to be a lot better. They're about to be out of the top 25. Uh, it's, it's, I'm sure they're with Miami right now. They suck. They can flip those way. numbers. They're 52. I'm, if I told you Rutgers scored 64 points and they blew out Kansas, <laughs> <laughs> like it just doesn't make sense, bro. I just, uh, I don't know. I'm with you on the Madison Miles. I think they need to put his ass back in the post. Uh, I don't know what stuff's got going on. Uh, this is another one of those coaches that looks really bad, in my opinion. The coaching job is not it's, it's not working. Yeah. Shout out to Charles Peter, though. Shout out to Charles Peter. I wish that he could hear these calls. I wish he could hear these calls. Yeah. We respect you, Pink, but you should not be the leading scorer. If you're the leading scorer, yeah, I may have taken an L. <laughs> hey, you want to talk about running up the score? Yeah. Nope. All right, this, this could be our – well, no, there's two more I got to touch on. I'm going to be honest here. We got two, we got two more I want to talk about. But Nova, 111 to 76 over Kansas State. 70 in the second half. And you know who they're That's leading scorers for? They're two leading scorers. They're two front court guys, Mugen Williams and Aaron Lovejoy. I'm telling those guys are nasty. Those guys on five of them are nasty. You could see, you could see their chemistry in the post. You could tell they played together. They each had seven assists. The majority of their assists were to each other on big man to big man action in the paint. It was sensational. The chemistry so, between those two was in, insane. Best you know what I said before the season. In the country, maybe. I, I'm not even gonna argue with that. I didn't get a chance to catch this one, so you got to tell you know you can tell me a little bit more how it played out. Um, but I'm not shocked by that. And I know when the season started, I said, look, because both of those kids, they're, they're not you know the heaviest guys around, but seven foot. Mobile, they defend. They defended in high school. They were willing passes. They had touch. They run the court. They got motor. Like this is what they're like. Clint Capello on like juice and and a monster. <laughs> like nightly, <laughs> like fifty pounds lighter. That's why they're yeah. mobile. Yeah. But but you got bro. I, mean, I think don't both of those kids start to get him. With Noah Jackson back, I think he put up. I mean, you know, I look, you know, I look through the box scores. Noah's out there in the backcourt. He's running. He's running the show. He's running the show. I'm look through all the stats. Him and and uh, JB with freshman Justin Bell did his thing. Yeah, well, that, no, that's I'm, a crazy thing, yo. I know you say him watch. Justin Bell had a, a good game. Look at the box score. He wasn't quite hitting shots like we know Justin Bell too, but he kept shooting because he's got that confidence. My my big thing is they put up 111, and Justin Bell missed a lot of shots. Like if Justin Bell, this was this was an off night for Justin Bell, 15, five and three. He's only a freshman, but that's an off night for him as we know him. If he is on one of his good nights, who they could have put up 140 tonight. They could have put up 130, something crazy. Like Justin Bell is, I think, still going to lead them in scoring by the end of the year. Him and Noah Jackson will be right up there, but I think Justin Bell could lead them in scoring. So to put up 111 points. With Justin Bell having a five for fifteen night, three for nine from the three, that's tough. That's tough. Hey, like I said, I'm 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 not gonna I'm not gonna you won't get a fight from me. Maybe you get a fight from the less knowledgeable. That front court I knew was gonna be scary before the season started. Uh, they they just had the right motor. I tell you what, I'm not gonna talk about. So if you want to talk about anything else, we can. But do not bring up the Houston man. Let me <laughs> talk about that. The Battle of Texas. Stop it. With, with no comment, sir. I don't want to hear comment. I don't want to hear it. You know, you know who Houston needs? You know who Houston needs to coach them? Oh, God, me. 
the savior, the savior of the city. The best thing that's ever happened to that city. James Harden needs to go and, and take all right. the job. And, and so you always know how to get me off the phone, man. I guess it's time to go. You ready? You ready? You ready to go? I can. We can talk tomorrow, please. I'll catch you all later, right, man. <laughs> yeah, I'll catch you tomorrow. Take it easy. Peace.